Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the bench. Happy Fourth of July for all my American friends out there. It is Independence Day, and uh, not the greatest weather. We're not cooperating here on the East Coast, which is too bad. And um, beyond uh, cookouts and fireworks, I still really can't take my motorcycle out because this weather's terrible. I think I got to move to uh, a better weather state. Anybody out there? In America, know a state where the weather is always nice. Uh, send me a comment. Well, anyway, today's video we're going to be going over the Master Airbrush. Oops, model SB88. This is a side feed airbrush with three needles and nozzles included. So, uh, really interested in some of these side feeds. This one's uh, we're doing now, and I got about three more to test. I got a Grex, a GSI, and a Hunter and Steinbeck, all side feeds. Uh, coming up soon, we're going to be testing all of them. I'm, I'm a little curious. Uh, I do like the one that I tested from, um, where is that? Here it is. Hold on, guys. This is from uh, Sparmax. Here it is, Sparmax. This thing is fantastic. Um, I really do like it, and the clear view is really nice. The only problem with this one, you can adjust the angle, but you can't switch sides. So if you're left-handed, you're kind of screwed. But uh, this one, you can choose sides. And I believe all the other ones you can. So that's where we stand right now. Now you notice off to the side here is another weather st uh, station that I picked up. And um, this one I includes a sensor that goes outside and it reads the outdoor humidity and the outdoor temperature. Now it, it lights up pretty bright. You can't see it here. Well, you can, I guess. Let me show you the brand. Tempro. Uh, these came highly recommended. I think one of you guys sent me a uh, a comment and said try out the temp bro. Here's the sensor. This goes outside and uh, you, you leave them next to each other and they pair up and then you just bring it outside and it feeds off it. And um, if you leave it plugged in like this, it stays lit all the time. If it's not plugged in, it actually goes off and then what you do is just tap this button. It stays on for 15 seconds and then it shuts off. Um, I like seeing it lit up, and so uh, I went with the plug-in variety here. It comes with the plug, and I believe the uh, sensor is rechargeable. Yeah, see it just went off? So I go ahead and plug this in, and then it stays lit. Anyway, this is indoor, this is outdoor. So it's currently 89.8 degrees. It's almost 90 degrees here uh, in New England. Only 56% humidity in the house. 67 it's going up and down um, sometimes when you talk it even affects it believe it or not it's only uh, 6 9 70 degrees in the house I got the AC on so uh, it's pretty uh, neutral let me look over at my booth it's 63 humidity percent which is perfect you know the one in the booth has a little smiley face so we're in that range that's perfect anyway I'll put a link below for this one I do like this I like the indoor outdoor um, I wish I could put it on the wall and not have it plugged in, but I can read it, you know, with a battery, but you can read it like a LCD that doesn't have the backlight where it light will probably lasts a couple years with a battery. So I still might be searching for that. Um, I'll let you know if I find it. But for now, this is uh, pretty nice. I do like it. It looks good. Walk in the room, it's almost like a nightlight, but we will leave that right there. Anyway, today is all about this master airbrush that we're going to be testing. Now, I sent you a picture of how this showed up, and they threw this in a bag, a loose bag plastic Amazon bag you've seen the white bags and it was just beat the hell it was opened up and everything was out of the case all strewn all over the place but uh, I did go through it and it looks like needles didn't bend or anything so um, there's that so I'm gonna go ahead with the test um, if it was bent I was gonna replace it but anyway let's check this out here are the needles uh, here's the nozzles 0 0.3 0 0.8 so the 5 must be mounted in there now the only thing is you're left without a tube to put your other one in, so you got to not get them confused. Yep, these are both marked also. So let's put these over here. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this airbrush. And here is the cup. We'll get everything else out of the way. I did uh, put this over here. I did go through the instructions. It's a universal instructions. I mean, it's got a trigger. It's got all their siphon feeds. It's got their gravity feeds. It's got... So it's... Uh, useless it doesn't even give an air pressure they recommend so we'll go with my expertise 
on my own here. But this is the airbrush. Here is where we will mount it. There's no screw. Nope, it just it's force fed in. That's pretty good, I guess. Wow, it's a big cup. Can you see the size of that cup? And I guess if you want to go on this side, yep, you unscrew here. Unscrew it. It's another one that's pushed in. Block this side. And there you go. Now, if you're left-handed, I am not. My brother is. Now you, you, you're perfect. So, very good feature. Very good feature. Of course, for me, we're going on this side. We'll plug that up. And we'll pop that in here. There we go. All right. Um, it's got a really good feel to it. It's kind of heavy, but it's because of all this, I believe. It doesn't really pull to the side too much. It's got a nice smooth action to it, though. It's got a cutaway. Yep. It's got a stopper. All right. Let's see how it unscrew. Oh, very well machined, to tell you the truth. Look at it. Nice fitting here. There's a nice fitting at the front. And it looks like it's got them. them. It looks like it's got that single nozzle. It does. That single type nozzle. Was just a drop in. Very, very good. Most of the airbrush companies are switching over to that style where you don't need the little wrench. Even though my favorite airbrush, which is the uh, GSI Creos, uh, they use that old fashioned style. But I haven't had to pull that out to clean it at all. So there is that. Let me see. Let's keep this from rolling. Hold it over there. Weather station. All right. Let's check out the needle. This is obviously the 0.5. And, um, Maybe we'll start with a 0.5. I don't know. I want to switch it to the point .8. I want to see what kind of uh, what kind of paint we could push with that. You know. Oh, make sure the trigger is down. There we go. Now it slides in pretty nice. This is, I'm guessing, a tension. Yep. This is how we screw. Okay, that's all we mounted in. Nope. No tension. It's just the mount. Not unlike. Uh, the Badger and some of my other ones have a tension adjuster. Let's go ahead and put this back on. All right. That's it. We're going to try it with some different... Let's see. Well, let's look at the nozzle. Huh? Let's look at that. Oh, that unscrewed. Nice. That has a fitting also. A washer, I think. There's the top. There we go. All right. So we do have to take the main piece out to put the nozzle in. This outer piece. So the other one's... This piece comes off, and then the nozzle fits perfect over that. Anyway, so we got to take this whole piece off. It comes with a wrench, obviously. Watch your fingers here. They don't get pointed and stabbed. All right, there we go. All right, for this, we will put on my new drain and dust catcher from GSI. There it is. And the quick release is on the bottom of that. So let's go ahead and put that on here. Spin that on there. There we go. All right, let's see if I can get an airbrush holder for this. One second, guys. There we go. I got one here from uh, Spray Gunner. If you get one of these from Spray Gunner, they're like 10 bucks, but they charge another three or four for this part. You need this part, you need the quick release hub. I mean, anyone fits it, you can put one that you have. But when you go to order these, um, make sure you, it's a two piece system, it's one. Or two pieces. Make sure you get the two piece. Two piece means you're getting the quick release, which is the main reason for the holder to actually work. So there we go. All right. Um, I'm gonna do a couple. Of, we'll do a needle change here. I'm not sure, but I know I want to try the point eight because I want to try something heavy here. Um, I might try this uh, Autoborn sealer from Createx. And let's see. And I have my Mecha Empire, which I haven't used lately, which I like quite a bit. These are my Mecha Empire primers, so uh, maybe we'll spray the primer through that, and then uh, maybe we'll do my polished alloy with the smallest needle. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do all three. I don't know. I'm not sure yet, but I'm curious. I really am. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll replace it and go three, five, and then eight. Maybe we'll do that. All right. I think I will. I think we'll do all three. Might as well. All right. All right, guys. Let me get a wrench out here, and this can get out of the way while I do this. And let's go ahead and disassemble it one more time. Remember that this is the point .5. I have to remember that. Here's what I would do. Because I know in the, the MISC 
in the midst of all doing all this, I will uh, definitely forget, you know? Just put a note down, right? 0 0.5. I don't need the two M's. I know what that is. And we'll keep that over there with it. Keep everything else on this side. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take off this front piece. Came right off. That's got a red seal also. Can you see it? And there it is. All right, so we have to keep both over here. That, the needle, and of course this main tip here, which I probably should have took off first. But I believe the protector, let me see. Yes, the, the, the main piece at the front is universal. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the point three. Point three. All right. So let's do that. Here we go. Point three going in. Very good quality, I got to say. Um, oops, I need the big part here. This is uh, $49.99. And um, losing pieces here. And that's a good price. But particularly, uh, for this is actually a pretty good quality piece. And to get three needle and nozzles combos included, uh, don't put on super tight, just enough, is uh, quite impressive, to tell you the truth. Quite impressive. So here is the front. That's it. Now I need to get this one and put that with the 0.5 over there. There we go. All right. So the 0.5 setup is here. Let's go back and put on the protection in the front. All right. And that's it. Now we got to do is put the needle in, which is right here. see what end comes up first this end it should be protected there it is oh oh it is fell off right there um i usually like to do something first let me get something guys i want to show you what to do before you really get started here all right guys i got what i was looking for this magic eraser let's pull the needle back out Getting a little messy over here, isn't it? Keep all this together, please. All right, here's what I like to do. I like to use the Flitz metal polish. Um, I will do that, but for now, um, a quick cleaning with a piece of magic eraser. You're just going to poke the needle through and pull it through, particularly near the front. Look at, can you see the dirt? Or the carbon, you know, whatever is built up on it. Just poke it through. Make sure you don't get your fingers. And it's kind of like buffing the needle up a little bit. It works really, really well. And uh, sorry, guys, somebody hit the camera. But uh, it's a great little little tip for you guys out there. Yeah, there we go. And you can, it already looks a ten times better. You know, and you can see all the spots. Those are all where I pulled it through. And you can see all the dots. See it? That's all the all the carbon buildup and whatnot. See it? So let's get that out of here. Now we're ready. Very good. Big difference. All right. Point three first. I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll use uh, we'll try regular paint through it for the first part. Let's put this stopper in. All right. Let's get all this built. Let's try it out with the point three. Maybe we'll do my polished alloy or one of the colors. We'll start with something like that. Basic. Perfect. There we go. And we're going to go side feed on the right. There we go. All right. All right. We'll head over to the booth and uh, we'll start with something. Maybe we'll do my polished alloy, which just came back in stock. If it wasn't in stock, I wouldn't have showed it to you. Um, don't want to make it hard on you guys when you're looking for a product that's not there. All right. That's the point five. We leave it there. This is the point three that's in there now. And then maybe we'll go up to the point eight and try it on some really heavy paint. But anyway, let's head over to the booth. I'll set the compressor to about 15 psi. It's what I recommend with my alloy. There it is. And um, we'll see how it performs, and I'll see how it cleans out, and um, we'll take it from there. All right, here we are at the Pace Spray booth. We are all set, hooked up. We have really protected there. Moisture traps, dust traps, but uh, I like it. Got a good grip. All right, let's go ahead. No thinning required with my polished alloy. 
maybe one squirt in there is all we need. Can you see it? There it is. All right. I have no idea what to expect. I have never tested this airbrush. So uh, I got it set for 15 PSI, which is what I recommend for my alloy here. I'm hoping to get some good results. It is pretty comfortable. So here we go. Trying to get the dust off this spoon. Oh, it's going on nice already. Seems to atomize the paint really well. Just air dried off there a little bit. This uh, color of mine here, this alloy, it dries really good. It looks a little cloudy at first, but it dries to a really nice looking uh, polished metal color. It's really good. Yep, it uh, put on pretty good. Uh, if you're wondering what's the difference, hold on one second. I'll grab another spoon. Yep. Because when you do this like this, you kind of can't see uh, the difference. But yeah, it applied this really well. Really well. Um, so, we will... Uh, move on to something else very impressive actually for this price point very impressive all right let me take the rest of this out put it back in the jar I will shoot some acetone through this quick because this cleans up really easy and uh, we'll try another color all right without switching the needle I went ahead and put in some Tamiya X7 red which I just tested in another airbrush test I just want to see how this works. Let's turn up the air pressure a little bit more. We'll go to 20 PSI and we'll just do the old spoon test and see how this performs. I don't know, it pushes a lot of paint for a point three. Alright, we're going to get in close, a little slower, get the gloss coat uh, base going here. Let's see what we got. it's efficient um, you probably don't have to put the air pressure up I turned it up a little I don't think I have to um, let's turn it down a little bit all right I put it down to uh, let's put that out of the way I put that down to uh, 15 psi let's see if we can get some fine lines out of this all right let's go here let's go Trying to find the point where paint comes out. It's pretty far back. Oh, there it goes. I know I'm not going to get a fine line out of this because it really seems to push a lot of paint. But, uh, oh, not bad. Can you see this, guys? I'm getting like pencil lines. That is not bad at all. And it's not even like blow out fuzzy panel lines either. It's uh, pretty even. Let's see how wide we can get this to go. Yeah, see, not terrain, not um, a really wide pattern, even as far back as I go. So, good for smaller parts. I wouldn't go any bigger than that spoon size, that's for sure. So, uh, let's take it up a next uh, step here on the We'll change the needle, and we'll try some of the thicker primers. All right, guys, next up is my Mecha Empire Black Primer. This is my uh, Air Force line. This is uh, Air Force because it's airbrush ready. These are lacquers. My other uh, paints are enamels. Um, all right, I put the .5 in here. So let's see how this goes. Oh, boy, this pushes. Oh, my gosh. This pushes a lot of paint. Wow, I paint a car with this, I think. This isn't even the bigger needle. The point eight is the big one. Oh, 
Well, you're going to prime a kit pretty fast with this. Wow, that covered fast. All right, I set it back to 20 PSI, but it looks like it's pretty efficient. You don't, uh, you don't really have to turn it up that much, I guess. Look at this. That is amazing. Now I know why the cup is large. You can really push a lot of paint. I don't know how fine details we can get. Let's see. Yeah, much bigger line, but really no, uh, see it? No fuzzing out on the line or blowouts. It really, really uh, does a really good job as, as far as uh, being nice and even. I'm, I'm impressed by that. I mean, really, look how usually you get the splattering effect. Look how fast my primer dries. It's already dry. <laughs> wow. Well, the point .5 is great. Um, yeah, well, let me clean this out. Um, let me show you how I cleaned it out. Let me grab the lacquer thinner here. Lacquer acetone. All right. All right. The needle doesn't pop out here, so we can back flush it here. And it's got a pretty tall cup, so it doesn't really splash out at all. After you back flush it, don't push that all the way through. Dump that out because you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to put. You don't want to clean it out and then pour that right back in. You know, I can see a little bit of uh, stuff on the edge of the cup. Cleans up nice. All right. I will hit it again with some acetone. And what you want to do is you want to back flush it again. If it comes up dirty, you got to do it one more time. See, it's still black. But this was a primer, so this is a, it's a pretty heavy primer. And at the end, when we're done, I'll pop the cup out and go in with a Q-tip. I will show you that. And um, once you're blowing out clean, we're good to go. That's it. Cleaned up nice. All right. All right. Let me get this out. Let me change the needle to the point eight, and we'll test that really heavy primer, uh, the Autobahn primer. All right, guys, I am putting this to the test because I am not going to thin this. This calls for not being thin in a 1.2 millimeter needle to a 1.4 at 25 PSI. We're going with a 0.8. Um, so I'm going to turn up the air pressure. It says you can thin it for airbrushes. Now I'm going to see if this thing can push this stuff through. I already shook this up quite a bit. It's a water base. I do have their thinner. But uh, <laughs> let's see what this can do. I don't know. Let's see. This is the point eight. Here we go. Oh my goodness. It's struggling. See it, guys? It is struggling. It's pushing it a little bit. Every so often it'll come out. <laughs> See it? Yeah, it had to be thinned a little bit. Almost got it to come out. I'm just gonna, the air compressor is just going to keep running. All right, let me uh, flush some of their uh, thinner in that, and then uh, we will try it. I guess it was too thick. It did come out like syrup. I didn't expect that much. can't believe it didn't push this much through. But, uh, yeah, let me grab their thinner. I'll be right back. All right, here's what they recommend you thin it with, their 4012 reducer. All right, so I put some in this cup. I only put uh, about 10 drops to about 30 drops of the orange uh, sealer. Can you see it? So I don't want to make it super thin. I just wanted to thin it out a little bit and to see how it will perform. I cleaned this out so I didn't have any uh, backup effect, so to speak. I wanted it to be a fresh batch. So let's see. All right, much better. Here's our spotty <laughs> attempt at the first one. This really is an auto paint. You can use this on actual cars. So, yeah, see this? Wonderful. It sprays it really nice. You can feel how powerful this sprays. So, let's see if we can cover up what we did already.
We can. There we go. Let's see if this covers up black. Not really. <laughs> I was here. Ah, not bad. It's getting there. <laughs> it got there. Well, it does push this out. Let's go ahead and check out the pattern on the cardboard. Let's see. One second. Let me grab it. Oh, guys, it's right behind me. Oh, here we go. Get a fresh piece. All right, let's see what kind of pattern we get with this. Yeah, this is uh, definitely point eight. I am about four inches away from that. So they... <laughs> There you go. It's like a controlled spray can. Look at that. Wow. All right. So let me uh, put this down, let this dry. Um, let me clean this out. We'll go back at the bench and uh, we'll go over the results. All right, guys, here we are back at the bench and uh, it performs well. Uh, it cleans pretty good. Let's uh, show you the final cleaning I would do I would get these I love these things I'll put a link below but I put up a link a few times for these and uh, see if we can get right in there and you can also if you want pull out the needle a little bit like this make sure nothing rolls away on us I'm gonna dip this in some acetone here one second all right pull up the needle and you're just going to want to go right there. And it goes right in all the way to the stopper. And see it? Look at all that from the orange. The last one I did. There's not much in there from before that. But I don't want to clean it out all the way. You can actually pass through if you guys just want to use this. Take the stopper out. You can probably go right through. See it? And you can tell it's really clean from here. It's hard for you guys to see. And that's it. Put the stopper back in. All right. I check the needle. Let's see. The needle is good. And I'll do my old trick again before we put it back. And that is the the uh, magic eraser trick there. And there we go. Nice and clean. And that's it. Now I will switch this back. I'll probably leave it in the middle or even the point three. It really, really pushes a lot of paint, no matter what the needle was, but. As far as the spray pattern went, that was quite different. Let's put this back on here. It's good looking too. It's got a sort of a satin finish here on the back half. See that? I took the uh, the filter off right here. So yeah, uh, here is the point three with my polished alloy. Look at that. It put that on really nice. Check this out. I mean, same needle, Tamiya, red, that is as smooth as glass. Look at that. Then we switched to the point five and put my uh, Mecha Empire primer. Look how good it laid that down. I should use my primers more often on camera. I don't, and uh, I don't know why it's really good. And uh, oh, and the auto sealer we had to thin it a little bit, uh, which is natural because after reading it, you know, point two to a point four in the point one point two and a one point four. Um, that's a really big. That's a spray gun, you know, in and of itself. So I, I had a feeling it wouldn't push it, but I would give it a shot because it was pushing this other paint so easily. But once I thinned it with a few drops, no problem. Pushed it right through the uh, auto sealer there. So. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Uh, at 49 bucks to include all three of those needles and nozzles uh, and to be an interchangeable, be it left or right side feed, uh, really good. Uh, a really good buy. Um, particularly if you're going to do a lot of primers and stuff, it holds a lot in that cup. That's a really nice big size cup. Uh, it cleans easy and um, it is comfortable. I, I really have nothing, nothing bad to say about it. I have so many airbrushes that I have some that perform as this does. Um, but if you're just starting out or you want one for doing primers, boy, oh boy, um, this will get the job done quite well. 
And uh, like I said, at 50 bucks to get a few extra needles thrown in there, man, a really, 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 really good deal. Um, but yeah, I will put a link below to it. Um, and I'll put a link below for my, my primers, my polished alloy. And, um, you know, I'll even put a link for the uh, clean Q-tips. I love these things. And I'll even put one up for the the my weather here, my uh, weather feed. We are at, what, 57% outside and 58 inside. So we uh, finally matched the outside and the inside for humidity. So everything laid down absolutely beautifully today. And... Um, I believe this was under 30 bucks. Um, really nice piece to have. Anyway, guys, there is the test. I want all my fine American friends to wish them a happy 4th of July. And uh, your well wishes on my passing of my beloved uh, bird. Uh, thank you so much for that, guys. It, it, uh, it helped quite a bit to get through. He's sat next to me you know, upstairs, uh, not in the paint room, for 20 years. And that's a long time, longer than dogs. So... Uh, yeah, if you think about that, um, it really it, 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 it's a sense of loss. I have two other birds in the same room, but uh, Sasha was special. And so I want to thank you guys for that, and, uh, and it's much appreciated. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful 4th of July. I'll see you midweek. We'll have another test up here. And, uh, yeah, that's all. Please join my Patreon. I'll put that below, top link. Uh, it's only four bucks a month. I'll answer all your questions, direct chatting, or if you need a video to see something performed in front of you, I'll do that for you too. I'll make you personal videos. And uh, you guys have been terrific. That's helped the channel out quite a bit. Anyway, guys, have a great rest of your holiday week. We will see you in the next video. God bless. Have a great day.